did this in a day. Hey guys, it's Good Steph, and welcome back to another video. Today, uh, we are doing another book video. I know, I'm sorry guys. I know you guys just got two book videos earlier last month. I don't know. But I think you guys are going to like this one, so... I wanted to review to all the boys I've loved before the book and the movie. So basically, the movie came out and all summer I was like, I wanted to read this. The only book I read this summer was The Great Gatsby. So I literally haven't read in ages. So reading this, it, it got me back into reading basically. I can't believe that I didn't read the whole summer. Like last summer I read like 10 books probably. No. I'll put up the real number up here, but I read so much last summer, so the fact that I didn't this year, it was time. Probably another reason why I'm going to be rating this book so high is because it brought me back to a good book. You know, I haven't read a good book in a while. I'm such a sap for romance. It's just a thing. First of all, I am so proud of myself. So, like I said, the movie came out already, and I was like, Oh my god, I haven't read the book yet. So Saturday of last weekend, I finally picked up the book. I bought the book like a month and a half ago, and I was like, okay, we're going to read this because everybody's talking about it. I don't want to get spoilers or anything. And I, luckily, I did not I did not get any spoilers. The only spoilers I actually got was from like the trailer, but that's fine because it's a trailer. I picked this book up probably 1 o'clock Saturday in the afternoon. And I finished it at 4 in the morning that night. I read this in less than 24 hours. I read this in a day. I have never, I don't think I've ever done that before. And so that just proves how good this book was. And I just can't believe I did that. I wish I had that kind of commitment to like homework or something. Or like something. But I don't. Let's get talking about it. I have this little list here. My main topic I want to talk about is that I did not think it was a cliche. Every single book, romance book, is a cliche, so I just can't even talk about that, but I'm gonna talk about why it's not one, if that makes sense. Like, in ways it is, because them falling in love was cliche, but it's a romance book, so that's that's the point is for them to fall in love, so get out with this. It's cliche that they fell, like, shut up. That's the point of the book. Is it a cliche that the heroes win and the villains lose? Yes, but you can't just label it bad because it's a cliche because of that. You know what I mean? I don't even know where I'm going with this. It's like a cliche, but not. Do you get it? I'm done. Okay, we're gonna talk about why it's not now, because that was stupid. Some of the reasons why it's not a cliche is all of her first. In typical books like this, the girl, oh my god, has never had a boyfriend, never had her first kiss. Okay, me. Usually, the cliche is that the guy does all of her first or whatever, and they emphasize that so much. And yes, in this book, it was her first boyfriend, her first, like she talked about, it was like her first time getting walked to her class, you know, a guy walking her to her class and that kind of stuff. But it wasn't emphasized in the story. Like it wasn't important in a way. It was a cliche because he was her first, but they didn't make it seem that way and they didn't really emphasize it that much. And I really liked that. There were moments when they talked about it, but because like if you have never had a boyfriend, of course you're going to talk about how you've never had a boyfriend. That's just a thing. But they didn't go the cliche way of it. Because some cliches, like I'm saying, they're unavoidable. Also, one thing, they were not forced at all. Just the way that they were together, they just seemed like friends. And then they just kind of cared about each other. Eventually, you know, that it made them more than that. I don't know. They were both in different places in their lives, I guess. But their hearts, in a way. Genevieve. Yeah, it's Genevieve, right? But it has a G, so it could be Genevieve, but it's Genevieve. I don't know, it's so weird. Because Laura Jean's heart was with Josh and his was with Genevieve, it just showed how they weren't forced because they were both getting over that other person. Initially, they, like, didn't have eyes for each other. And that's what was so different, is that it wasn't forced like that. And then I also thought that the love triangle, I called this a love rhombus, not a square. Well, that's... 
not a square but or rectangle but a love rhombus it was different because of the fact that their hearts were still with other people that it made this rhombus very complex one thing i do have to say about the movie that i'll say right now is that they cut out josh and her kissing and just the fact that josh likes her like they kind of talked about that for a second like you could see that his heart kind of was like second guessing they went a different direction with that which i guess is safer because that's a little controversial i really liked how in the book they crossed those boundaries because the whole sister thing and him liking but oh my god that's that's intense final thing um oh jeez oh, i'm messing up my hair my hair is so annoying today what is that the little curl right there stop but the last thing that was kind of different is the book ended on a cliffhanger where they weren't together at the end i kept reading it i was like at when it was like getting on four in the morning when i finished it i literally finished it right at four in the morning well probably like 3:58. but it was like 3 30 in the morning i was like why are they still not talking like the end of the book took that turn on focusing on her relationship with um, her sister Margot, so like sh they kind of stopped talking about Peter, and I'm like, why? What's? Where's this going? Why are they not talking yet? I thought it was nice, also that it wasn't just about Peter and her; that it also went with family, with her sister, but it just like went. Th through different learning experiences than just the love story and like I know that happens a lot but th I really liked this one so I liked how the ending didn't focus on that problem but mainly on the sister problem but then in the next book we will emphasize on that problem of them getting together which at the end of this book has a little um you know a little arc like two chapters of the next book and I've read it already and I'm just I'm not gonna read it until this weekend <laughs> My weekends are booked sorry this weekend is labor day weekend so it gives me more time so maybe i'll read both books well my eyes just got really big chill chill fangirl chill this is a love series so of course they'd have a cliffhanger i don't know did twilight have cliffhangers i don't know see i haven't read that it's sitting over there and i will but i'm not imagine having to wait a year or more for this sequel oh my god let's see there's a quote at the end of the book that i really not to like analyze things i highlighted it in green it just like shook something inside the quote is i think i see the difference now between loving someone from afar and loving someone up close when you see them up close you see the real them but they also get to see the real you so this quote the reason why I really like that quote is because this book is all about how she just saw people you know you always have like those crushes where you see someone and you're like they're hot and then you like kind of talk to them a little bit during school and so you get those like little crushes about them but there is a difference with a real crush where you like actually become friends with them like you build a relationship and then you realize you like or love them i really like that quote because it really shows like that there is a difference in crushes one last thing i have to say um is about josh's character i already talked about like his like loving both the sisters and i don't know <laughs> i don't know if you guys have ever listened to or seen hamilton the musical but hamilton is funny okay there's these three sisters called the schuyler sisters in the musical and well i guess in real life too because it's, it's based on a real story hamilton you know met the older sister and they like talked and she you know grew a crush for him and i think he liked her for a sec but then she couldn't marry him because of money issues because back in the day she had to marry rich you know for her to keep that last name the schuyler sisters schuyler so he ended up meeting her younger sister then they got married so like this book just gave me a little hunch to that because Josh likes both sisters at a point. Now in the second one we'll find out who he actually likes and ends up with. From what I could tell at the end of this book I still don't think he's fully with Margot again. I think he's still shook. What? I'm very tired. I have a question. I'm still filming. I know you're filming. I have a question. Yes. What? What's this even about? 
I'm reviewing to all the boys I've loved before. Oh, that's a good movie. Can we <laughs> review it real quick? I haven't gotten to the movie yet. Oh, uh, the movie's really good. Uh, <laughs> I didn't read the book. I'm going to read the book. Yeah, so don't watch this until you do. But yeah, so the, that's all my notes were about the book. I'll just talk about the movie because the movie makes me realize how much I loved certain scenes. In the movie, you know, they obviously had to cut certain situations that they had together. Like that one weekend that they went to, to go get those chairs from that old guy's house. Like, oh my god. Like, I love how Peter asked her to go with him and just like that whole experience was really cute. The one thing I do like about the movie that they changed was um, I forget his name. The one guy she liked that was gay that they talked about. I liked how in the movie he was like friends with her and they actually like talked about the situation. Now the book he did, sorry I'm squeezing this, in the book they did have that kind of like friendly advice. He was still there with that kind of advice but I liked how in the movie he like actually knew and like gave advice about that. I don't know. Definitely like the book better. The movie had its moments. The one thing that makes me super mad about the movie is the whole Josh thing because that was such a big part of the book. The other thing that I hated was that they ended the movie with them getting together. In the movie they ended up together really like defeated that feeling that you got after finishing the first book because it was that cliffhanger, you know what I'm saying? I understand why they did that in the movie because they didn't know if they would get a sequel or not and we still don't have a confirmation of one. I'm sure they will because it did so well and it's so good. Now it's kind of like, what are they going to do if they make a second movie? Because I haven't read the second book, so I don't know yet if they get together really fast or if it takes the whole book for them to get together. Because if it takes them the whole book to get together, then what are you going to do, guys? What are you going to do, Netflix? I don't know. Now I'm rambling. I am so tired, guys. I don't even know what else to say. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know all your thoughts about the book and the movie down below. Leave a like on this video. And all my social medias are below, and if you're too lazy to go down there and do that, just follow me anywhere at Kootstuff, the same way it's spelled here. Also down below, the first link is my merchandise, so if you want to go buy something from there. So if you're not already a cootie, be sure to subscribe to be a part of the Coot Clan, and I'll see you guys in next Friday's video. Bye! <laughs>